All right, so welcome back in. Today we're gonna to dive into a layer one project that I think is an interesting one that continues to percolate to the top of the heap, especially as we see a lot of things happening in layer one, especially around gas fees, Ethereum, all that kind of stuff. Who's gonna be the players that really kind of explode in 2022? And today we're gonna to dive in a little deeper on Avalanche. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to Tech Path. We're gonna get John Wu on the, on the horn again and have you kind of break it down for us, John. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Paul, it's great to see you again. Happy New Year. Thank you. Listen, John, let's learn a little bit about where Avalanche is today. The last time you and I talked, Rush was just being rolled out. It was several weeks before that. Obviously, there's been an explosion in the metaverse and a seismic tectonic shift has occurred. How is Avalanche moving forward in 2022? Well. Avalanche continues to uh, explode. I think, you know, if you look at any metric, it is actually the fastest growing based on usage in terms of growth rates of any layer one. Um, and also, if you look at it from a 14 month since mainnet, this part of the life cycle, in right. absolute terms, Avalanche is also, you know, the, the fastest growing, no matter how you cut, cut and slice it. But um, it's a super interesting time for the entire space. And the amount of things that we're seeing and happening on Avalanche, it's incredible. In fact, I think we're well over 1 million transactions per day. That's like mm -hmm. 70, 80 percent of what happens in terms of number of transactions on Ethereum in a day. Yep. So yep. it's super exciting. John, talk to me a little bit about the ecosystem in general. Are there any projects that you're watching onboarding? Obviously, the result of Avalanche Rush, what you guys have been doing to really kind of transition a lot of Web 2.0 developers into Web 3 and into blockchain. How's the progress coming for Avalanche in terms of ecosystem build out? Thanks for asking that because the ecosystem is thriving and growing really quickly. And it's kind of like success begets success. A lot of developers come to Avalanche to develop, not only because the technology itself, the underlying consensus protocol is innovative, but the tools that Ava Labs has built for Avalanche allows the uh, developer to develop easily. It's EVM compatible, yeah. um, but the community there is also incredible. There is, you know, every day we have new dApps showing up. It's now over 500 live dApps. There's another 200 to 300 that are in integration. So, um, and then in terms of like social community uh, between Twitter and all the, Telegram slash other uh, chats, we estimate right. it's close to well over a million. The uh, number of addresses, cumulative addresses are, are now like 1.6 million. And on a monthly basis, there's over seven, 800,000 of active um, addresses. So between the adoption on the user side, the developers continue to come because of the uh, uh, revolutionary consensus protocol and easy to use technology, the ecosystem continues to grow. And it's grown in many ways. The DeFi vertical um, continues to be super strong on Avalanche. On any given day, if you look at the TVL, it is either two or three um, in terms of TVL, only Ethereum is, is, is higher. And then also what's interesting now is there's so many new um, areas in gaming and new dApps are developing there as well. So it's a real fun time. Yeah. When you, okay, so you, you get a chance to probably talk to developers a little bit more, uh, especially in the area of the, you know, this new deal with Blizzard to fund your kind of a supercharge the growth on getting into new projects. I'm kind of curious with, with projects like what are rolling out on Avalanche. One thing I'm always interested in, I used to run developers for many years, 300 at a time. The big question will always be from a developer, what does the rail system look like in terms of giving me the, the runway to be able to do something special? Because everybody wants to kind of make their mark, especially in blockchain right now. Are you seeing more developers leaning into uh, play to earn, leaning into DeFi? What, what hot category are you seeing kind of percolate there so, with Avalanche? The great thing about Avalanche and its strong presence in, in DeFi and now and the, and the fact that there's instant finality on Avalanche that allows settlements and payments, that works really well for uh, transactions. And that also works out well with gaming when you have that rapid fire or you need that instant finality. 
And mm -hmm. what's happening in terms of gaming on um, crypto in general, not just on Avalanche, is you're really seeing the intersection effectively of DeFi, play to earn, with NFTs, with right. gameplay. So there are things like DeFi Kingdom on Avalanche that's coming. It, it is one that's um, already out there that's been you know over a billion of TVL. It's, it's a really hot game elsewhere, but it's coming because of that DeFi capability and the community on Avalanche. Um, there's another great game that has launched, Krabata, on the Avalanche. It is uh, an underwater sea game. What's amazing in some of these games that we're seeing is there's a lot of first-time users of blockchain and crypto showing mm -hmm. up on these games. I think these are traditional gamers who are used to like AAA publishers with great gameplay. But suddenly they're like, okay, the gameplay, let's be honest, on blockchains and cryptos in general, probably not as good as a AAA published title you play on Xbox or something. But the fact that you are integrating play to earn and also possibly getting unique NFTs as your character, make it more fun. And then you're part of a community. So it's right. like the you know community build in the game itself is, is attracting a lot of new players. Well, and I think you know you mentioned the the point of it is still very early stage right now in terms of game development. We're starting to see traditional AAA title developers starting to move over to blockchain. We're continuing to see that kind of evolution, and as play to earn kind of becomes its own wor world, I think that in itself is going to be something. I'm kind of curious. So we we've been tracking this. Uh, for quite some time, and this is there's a little seems to be a little bit of a pushback from traditional, you know, uh, AAA title game players in the industry toward play to earn. Now the likelihood is that we'll see a lot more adoption. I was listening into what Sony and Nvidia were both talking about, and really what they were saying is that they see mass adoption coming in this area, which means that play to earn and AAA gaming might at some point intersect. What are your thoughts on how that might play out in the future? That, that's a very insightful question, uh, Paul, because there is hesitance from the traditional Web2 publishers. Um, their edge is better graphics, more detailed yep. game, because all the stuff is, serve, uh, is served and saved on a monolithic you know, server, so they can do more things, CPU processing, all that stuff. Um, but what they're seeing though is now they're seeing their game players going over to blockchain enabled gaming just like what i said earlier a lot of the games right. that are on avalanche we're seeing first-time players then these guys anecdotally must probably have come from the the traditional triple a title world they like mm -hmm. that play to earn they like the intersection like the community build like having their own unique character to take from one game to another um so yes it's classic david and goliath the goliath definitely doesn't want it to happen. But ironically, we in the uh, uh, Ava Labs have had so many conversations with AAA publishers trying to figure out or talk to them, either educating about Web3 or helping them figure out a strategy and an entree into Web3. So it's a, um, a catch-22 for them, frankly. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, the adoption level too, because you know, even though gaming is still, you know, it's approaching a trillion dollar industry, one of the things that I'm always, you know, just in my own discovery model of research and understanding the the industry as especially as blockchain starts to infiltrate a lot of different uh, verticals out there, gaming is one that I feel is still very undertouched. I mean, in, in terms of emerging countries on play to earn, what that might mean to economies where we will see this in the major Western countries as we see more adoption, especially as graphics and how play to earn. Because once you put play to earn and either, and also play and earn, which is where it's still a fun game to play, but there's all that. I don't want to go too deep on that, but the point is, is I think this is just barely scratching the surface right now in you know addressable market, even though Sony and NVIDIA and all these companies uh, that and then all the studios for AAA, they're, ex they're exploding. I'm just wondering when you layer in blockchain, which is still very young, and what that might look like in five years is gonna be very interesting. How much focus are you guys putting on block metaverse gaming in general at Ava Labs? So DeFi is where the value is being accrued to from TVL and from activity, but incremental adoption, new adoption, new wallets, new things like that 
is definitely coming from gaming. It was NFTs mm -hmm. last year, and now it's yeah. NFT plus gaming or the intersection of the two. So we put emphasis on wherever our community wants to go. We definitely right. have edges in terms of the existing community, existing functionality, number of dApps in, the, in, in DeFi and DeFi, and um, the TVL is going to continue to explode. But the community, the developers are just building, you know, on top of Avalanche with gaming and NFT. So there's a there's a definite, very strong interest in that area as well. So, OK, so Blizzard Fun uh, launched. This is a kind of a culmination of VCs that are coming together to fund special projects within the Avalanche ecosystem. What's the process for developers to pitch out to that fund or how do you, how, I guess, how is that fund discovering all this new potential opportunity that's in the space right now? What's the, what's the methodology? Awesome question. So thank goodness in this case, the, it's all inbound. Um, mm -hmm. It's known the developers and entrepreneurs are coming to Ava Labs and Avalanche on their own. We don't have to have quote unquote outbound uh, activity. There's just way too much inflow in the inbound. What we do do is we figure out where um, the pockets of interest are, where we need things, um, where Avalanche needs things, and then where and then we look at who are the best entrepreneurs based on experience, based on te technological capability, uh, business development capability, and also what Avalanche community wants because we can really help a lot of uh, dApps jumpstart their business. We have a large, thriving community on Avalanche, and we know what they want. So if it's the right dApp in the right area, we'll help them. It's not relationship capital at Blizzard. It is actually, sorry, it's not transactional capital. It is relationship capital, and right. we'll help them build a community. So the, it's inbound, first of all. And then second of all, we try to filter out where the pockets of interest are and then we figure out who or what areas that we can help out in terms of their needs and functionality. Yeah. I, and I think when you have, um, you know, investment structure like that, that's one of the biggest things that developers, young entrepreneurs, startup founders, all those people, they're looking for because they, you know, typically they kind of know the direction they're going for, but strategic you know, assistance and also those relational aspects that you're talking about, including, including community and tying into, you know, a much bigger uh, movement is always a, a very big part of how they make their selection. Because I think that's going to be, you know, it's going to be one of the things that really, especially in 2022, uh, because of the explosion potential in, blo in blockchain and just Web3, is getting those developers to commit. It's kind of like, you know, trying to go out and get the best talent in football or something. Uh, is there, <laughs> you guys almost need people to sign in and like, I am committing to Avalanche Labs. You know, well, I mean, to thing. take that analog a little further, we have like, if, if it's trying, trying to recruit a football team, we'll probably have like, you know, 10 quarterbacks coming in right now for one spot. But yeah, oh, um, that's true. We want to see which quarterbacks have the best track record in high school um, or their previous, you know, uh, place yep. they played. And then it's like, is the avalanche ecosystem a running game or is it a passing game and then let's help out point. the ones that have the best track workers who fit into what the community wants so yeah. um it's a very uh great time for entrepreneurs as well as for um avalanche it's like yeah, for sure you know in the old days you have to go raise money then you have to go do all the other things and sure the vcs definitely were helpful but this is like being integrated and exactly. This yeah. is far more than it's like partnering. It's far more than just helping. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, upstarts, evolution, metaverse gaming, all that's kind of being developed. Obviously, we've seen the growth of Avalanche in general. Let's talk about enterprise, though, because enterprise is really, I think, one of the key areas that will be the tipping point in blockchain, uh, whether it's you know, onboarding for retail and what we'll see in terms of retail investment, but also just the companies that are going to be involved, whether it's payment rails out there. You know, if you look at something like a, a Plaid, uh, MasterCard, the evolution of where those types of components will go. A lot of people will say that blockchain could potentially completely replace all of that in, in terms of transactional detail. What are your thoughts on how enterprise is going to be able to kind of meet that? Because that seems to be a little bit of a, 
you know, a little collision coming down the road, maybe two, three years down the road as we start to see adoption at, at mass scale. What are your thoughts? It's starting already, especially on Avalanche. You know, Avalanche um, has this sub-network capability where enterprises can create private blockchains that sit on top of the Avalanche consensus protocol and effectively think of it as a simple API that allows them to be part of the permissionless world when they need to as well. So the yes, it, it may come into full swing two or three years, as you suggested, but it's already started. For instance, yeah. um, Deloitte has partnered with Ava Labs to, to uh, create their um, um, projects and create their applications for their end customers on Avalanche. That says a lot when a yeah. mega, you know, IT and accounting consulting firm has chosen a permissionless blockchain like Avalanche to build on top of in order to service their clients. And these are clients that, you know, are massive clients. That is one partnership. Um, yep. Ava Labs and Avalanche now are part of the a Ma MasterCard uh, start, startup program. The, um, and then there's also B2B2C. We've all already partnered with uh, players like Tops, where they handle the digital collectibles for Major League Baseball, Bundesliga, yep. and other uh, uh, licenses they have. They handle the C part, and we're effectively licensing them or providing the, the technology engine from the B to their B, and then they do the C part, and it helps us get a um, Alva Labs, that is get a uh, revenue share for every incremental transaction in the digital collectible baseball card or um, right. football card, et cetera. So uh, going back and tying this in with gaming, I think gaming is where it's helping a lot of retail usage and adoption. Uh, enterprise is where you're gonna have more institutional adoption. And I don't right. necessarily mean yeah. Uh, ownership, like you know, financial firms buying into exactly. the space. I mean, like actually yeah. using it. And you know, what have we seen? The general trend is that the enterprises are realizing that whenever it is a multi-party system that they're communicating with, um, it's a lot easier and actually even more secure to work on a permissionless environment or in a, uh, a semi-private blockchain environment than it is to communicate and transfer things, inst knowledge instantly in a multi-party monolithic server type environment. So that's why they're adopting. Yeah, yeah I think the, you know, the, the decentralized concept of blockchain and what it represents to the monetary system. In a lot of places, I think the evolution of where tech is being adopted, especially if you look at levels like Wall Street in general, like you mentioned the situation with Deloitte, those kinds of rollovers, that's a big win for you guys, so congratulations on that one. But Thank that's you. my point, is you've got really a lot of behemoths in the enterprise space that are dealing with what is really considered about 20-year-old technology. Even if you look at just the governmental systems that probably could benefit from blockchain and translating all that. Here's my question to you. You've got gaming going, you've got NFT, the conversion of metaverse, we'll see a lot more ecosystem growth, developers onboarding, you're trying to transition to Web3, enterprises flowing at you at a big pace. How do you guys keep up with this in terms of team? Because this seems like just a, an avalanche of stuff coming at you guys. How, where, where are you right now in terms of people? No pun intended. So we're about 150 people. Um, and that's one way we, you know, we try to keep up is the hiring continues. Um, what's interesting about the hiring though, is um, we see a massive uh, inflow now of developers who are, who are web two, who want to get mm -hmm. into web three. We see yep. a massive inflow of traditional Wall Street bankers or something now who want to get in and learn how web three is. Whereas call it, you know, even a year ago, um, it was more like the crypto native developer, crypto native person who already bought into the space, space who was trying to like figure out how to join a great blockchain company. Today, the, uh, the, the sourcing of talent is now coming from world-class organizations from Web2 who want to learn and get into Web3. Yeah, I think, okay, so that you bring up a good point there. And I think that is 2022. This is something I've talked about on the show quite a bit is I'm worried that blockchain, because I've ran through this in the birth of the internet when I was trying to build developers to help kind of move on to the web, the original launch of what we know as the internet today. And the biggest challenge that we had at that time was developers 
mostly because they didn't know anything about this new protocol that was being developed on. This is a little bit different. Web 2 has kind of evolved into some functionality from data systems, not necessarily understanding what Web 3 is, but I guess the question will be is, do you think that that conversion, because most of these I would say are, those good developers are probably in their late 30s right now, maybe even early 40s. Are you seeing enough transition from the Web 2 tech stacks that are out there running everything today, transitioning to Web 3? Well, I think uh, hiring great developers is always a bottleneck, no matter um, whether Web 2 or Web 3. So the answer is always no. I'm going to say that right away, just like you had issues back in um, the internet days. It's the same thing here. There's never enough good talent. With yeah. that said, uh, it's made the crypto native firms like Ava Labs for Avalanche. Um, it's been another source now and it's a lot yeah. easier. It's It was literally like in you know a year ago, a year and a half ago, you had to do a lot of convincing about the space itself yeah. before you can get one of these guys to come and work at your firm. Yeah. Now it's not so much the proselytizing anymore. It is really just picking out who can transition quickly. Yeah, yeah, G getting the winners. All right, let's look at what's coming up for you guys in 20. I was looking at a line list of things you guys have going on. Uh, you are looking at more investment strategy coming in. How big will that be? Do you? What are some of the things that you guys are trying to do strategically for the next few years? So you mentioned earlier about um, Blizzard and Blizzard is off and running. We've deployed about uh, a third of the dollars in there and we are actively looking to continue to grow new uh, activities in DeFi uh, in terms of you know new dApps, create, uh, cre creative and innovative dApps. Obviously gaming and NFT is also a big focus. So that's continued to go. And we also talked about developers. There's gonna be 15 hackathons um, sponsored by Ava Labs and Avalanche this year. And the big one is gonna be our DevCon in Barcelona, March 22 to 27th. It is gonna be um, an incredible uh, event. And I encourage any developer to reach out or to show up in Barcelona and learn more about Avalanche. That's gonna be, I think, a big, big event that people do not want to miss. Those are some of the big things. We're gonna have great new products that are gonna come aboard. We, I can't really go into them right now because some of them are not announced, but think about the Avalanche Bridge you know, one of the best bridges out there. They're gonna be similar type products coming out uh, very, very shortly. And I do not wanna miss the enterprise side. We are in talks right now to Deloitte like size uh, players that will be announced um, hopefully shortly as well. I like that. So you, you guys have your, your plans cut out for you, I think for 2022. Overall, John, last question. And that is when you look at blockchain, the evolution of crypto. I mean, if you look back just one year ago, I think the adoption, the acceleration of the industry is, is you know, it's undeniable. How long before you think we'll see true, you know, critical mass really start to play into what's happening right now in cryptocurrency and blockchain? So I think when you say critical mass, you're talking about, you know, traditional adoption and then the adoption being thought of as like, first I'll do it with an enterprise. They think about a blockchain solution first before they go with a SaaS or some other type of solution. Yeah. Um, I think we're just hitting liftoff velocity right now in the next year or two, but I wouldn't be surprised in three to five years where the similar to the Deloitte situation, where it's kind of like that switch 10, 12 years ago when people just said, AWS instead of having yeah. their own cage in the in the bot in the bottom of their you know building or something. Mm -hmm. So um, it's taking lift off velocity right now, and my I wouldn't be surprised if we see that critical adoption level in the next two to three years. Interesting. So coming fast, that's for sure. John, it's always good having you on the show. I love picking your brain to kind of understand where Avalanche is going. We've been a big fan of the project. So good luck to you this year. We're going to be watching very closely analyzing AVAX and uh, what you guys are doing heavily. So stay on it. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Excellent. Thanks again for, uh, of course, you guys, if you're tuned in over on the podcast, thanks for giving us some kudos over there. We always love that. If you're not, this is the place we're going to catch all these great interviews of CEOs and leaders in the industry, including devs, et cetera, 
right here on the YouTube channel. So all you have to do is jump over to YouTube, search Paul Barron Network. You'll find us. Subscribe there and make sure and hit the bell because you're going to get notifications of our live streams. We're nearing our 300,000 subscriber mark, which means we're going to be doing a massive giveaway on our Diamond Circle. Make sure and click the link to low, below to join that. And of course, you want to hit me up. It's over on Twitter. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath. Thank <laughs> you.